All right, doing a robot explanation for our winter robot. Been competing with this one for a while now, I think since like mid-December. Um, so yeah, you know, want to SIG with it, so would recommend. Uh, and we also got three signature tournament finalists. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, depends on how you look at it, but you know, it is what it is. So let's start off with the dry base, as all these robot explanations do. So let me just put it down. We're running a 450 RPM on 325 inch wheels, uh, six motors, you know, three per side, pretty standard. Um, so the gear ratio is 36 to 48. Um, yeah, the teeth on the gears, they're kind of, there's barely any overlap. So we're fixing that on the new robot, but it hasn't actually been a problem. So we've been running this drive base for like two months, 2.5 months now. So there's really no issue with this, but we are still fixing it. Um, we're using traction wheels in the middle because it kind of helps in the corners, like particularly on that short barrier. You can, it's a lot easier to turn around a corner if you're accurate. So that's why we like traction wheels and drivers have been used to it the whole season now. So we're kind of keeping it. Also helps with barrier climb. Um, yeah, just because you have more grip over the barrier so you can catapult yourself over. Um, we're also using these McMaster car spacers. So thank you 515R for putting this in their last year's spin up explanation video. This kind of helps a lot. This pretty much makes the whole drive base work. Uh, I've seen some teams do it just with like shaft collars over here. Uh, and I think over there, I, I forget exactly the exact setup, but it's possible with just shaft collars. So you don't need these, but these help a lot because they kind of reduce weight. Um, on these axles specifically, we have the shaft collar like there in between the motor, I don't, know, I don't know if you can see that, but that's where the shaft collar is, and then these are just screw joints, actually. Um, that's what the wheel, wheels sit on, because you know you don't really need to have whole axles, and the friction on the screw joint is better, because we're using like the brass circular inserts inside this ge these wheels, which you cannot see, but that's what we're using. Um, so yeah, that's the dry base over there. Let me push the bot. So on the dry base, we're also using all these wall riders, so different corners and ball bearings over here. So these wall riders, this is just a shaved 36 tooth gear. Like you just take the, all the teeth off and it becomes this pretty smooth wall rider. Um, it bends quite a lot, but you just unbend it and it still works fine. And you know, honestly, it doesn't really need to be perfect. It just needs to bounce your robot off. Like the point of these wall riders is like on those walls or even the plastic walls is so that you, like you don't get like these sleds caught on the inside and it pretty much helps with driving so would recommend the driver does prefer them um yeah so next i guess actually one more thing before we move on to the intake uh we kind of put a lot of the center of gravity of this robot towards the front that way like when you climb up the pipe let me see if i can do this barrier is kind of broken right now but I'm putting the robot on the two wheels so it's very front heavy which helps a lot with climbing barrier um, and also with climb but I'll get to that later um, so now intake it's a pretty standard design we just have that low joint like most teams are running we're running flex wheels just because everything else is getting entangled for us so flex wheels are best and we have sleds just to pop off my silly bowl. Uh, tri ball sits in here. Um, and then this kind of standoff just pushes the tri ball into the goal when this pops up and we're driving into it. So, yeah, not much more to it. I think we're running out at 600 RPM. Yeah, this is just a chain, uh, double chains, by the way, because you can't have a chain breaking in the middle of a match. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Moving on, let's get to climb. This is the favorite part of the robot for me. I love the climb. Uh, we're using four 75 millimeter pistons. So I got two of them for demonstration. It's these pistons. They're very long when they extend. So let me push it real quick. That's the length of the piston extension. So it's very long. Uh, so that kind of helps 
uh, get a lot of torque and uh, has a, there's a lot more energy in it because, um, you know, there's 50% extra space for the air to push through as compared to the 50 millimeter pistons. So that's what we're using here. Um, as you can see, the joint is pretty far away, like the distance between these two, very far. And you want to maximize this as much as possible um, to get the most torque out of these pistons. Um, so the climb doesn't extend super high, uh, but like these tips of the sleds, it's enough to get onto the pipe. And these sleds, um, that's kind of what makes the climb work well as compared to just work. Um, and so the pipe sits in this kind of gusset area right here. And these sleds uh, just help the pipe get into there. And we kind of noticed that it's pretty important to have the um, this bottom part at least be parallel to the climb arm. Because when the climb arm is extended, this is at an angle anyways. So you don't, like all the teams doing like a, a angle like this, like it's kind of useless at that point. Like the only thing you're doing, like the this hook part is the only thing that's touching the sled. But for us, we have all of this that is kind of being used to get the climb pipe into our gusset. So that's kind of a neat thing there. Um, the joint of the pistons is questionable. It's bending as you can see, but it does work. Uh, so, you know, why, why fix what's not broken? So that's that. Uh, other thing real quick on climb, we try to box our C channels, or at least it's for a slap or two, but like you wanna get as much what is it, material on your screw joints as well. And over here, actually where the climb pistons are attached, that's pretty much we're boxing the C-channel just to make sure it's not bending all that because that's what we had issues with um, before. So we boxed that when we were replacing bent stuff. Um, so now let's move on to the slapper, the least, least used part of the robot in this game, but it's only for skills. All right, it's a pretty simple slapper. So it's a 24 to 72 tooth gear. Uh, we're using a slip gear and we actually have cut that 24 tooth gear just for weight savings. Spacing is not perfect, but doesn't need to be. So, you know, that's that. And we uh, cut out that part of the gear, as you can see, just so, because we wanted to have our stopper right here. This is the high strength axle, it's a stopper. So otherwise the gear would pretty much go to get in there. So that's what, that's what we cut that off. We're using foam to stop it, standoffs, boxed. You know, it's a pretty normal slapper. We're actually using what we call 2.5 rubber bands per side because we have one, two, and then a small rubber band. We found that at least for us, that's the kind of gave us the ideal power, I guess, so to speak. Um, we're also using plastic standoffs just to save weight and because these aren't really load bearing, so they like don't really do anything except for like keep the tribal up. That's pretty much all the, what these standoffs do. Um, so yeah, uh, and we also have a gear here. We took an old slip gear and this just adds like momentum, like uh, what is angular momentum to the slapper. Um, Cause you wanna pretty much hit the tri-ball with the same amount of weight as the tri-ball itself, which I believe is 3.4 ounces, but someone probably will correct me on that. Um, so yeah, now we have wings. So wings, we kind of rebuilt these recently and my slide isn't fully attached because I just zipped tied it last minute. So it's not going in, let me demonstrate on the other side that wasn't detached. Yeah, so that's the wing. We have the standoffs on, on the bottom. This kind of helps with climbing and also touching the bar. So whenever we're bowling or mash loading, um, we just extend the wing and then we're touching the bar pretty much at any point. So we have a big, big kind of room for air. Um, you know, that's where the piston's attached. As you can see, it's one, two, three, four holes. It's crazy, I know. Um, but yeah, I don't know, nothing much to it. It's just a wing. I guess one thing, we have, again, quite a lot of material for the screw joints. So the screw itself shouldn't be bending. And we also support it with this plastic gusset. Um, we just keep it fixed. So you want your screw joint to be bending as little as possible. So even though it's steel, it'll, it'll still bend under load. So you want to support that as much as possible. Um, so, so yeah. I think, oh, we use a distance sensor. We brought this back from the um, the Berkeley robot to touch the pipe in the autonomous, so that's pretty cool. Helps a lot later on, um, so yeah. And then I guess the other 
important thing, I mentioned this earlier, but center of gravity, it's all towards the front. That's why we have the tank up here. That's the only reason we have the tank up here. It's just for center of gravity. Um, I mean, it adds weight to the intake, which I think helps. Um, maybe it doesn't. We would need to do more testing, but that's not the reason the tank is here. The tank is here for center of gravity. The battery is up here, also for center of gravity. And then we packaged all of our solenoids down here just for center of gravity. Um, so even though this kind of weights more air because the solenoid is farther away from the pistons, um, we don't use it too much, so it's not a big deal. And the center of gravity is more important. And, oh yeah, this is the only tank we're using, the 200 milliliter one, the new X one. So we, some teams, a lot of teams are running two tanks. We're only running one tank. This is just for weight savings. Um, yeah, so we are, are a pretty light robot. We're 13.5 pounds. Um, but yeah. Okay, I think that should be it. Leave uh, any questions in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, whatever. I'm trying to boost my view count. So yeah, let's go.